I thought we were going to drive, so I stood up and walked to my car. But Don Juan called me from the house and told me to pick up my net with gourds. He was waiting for me at the edge of the desert chaparral behind his house. We reached the lower slopes of the western Sierra Madre Mountains around 3 p.m. It had been a warm day, but toward the late afternoon, the wind became cold. Don Juan sat down on a rock and signaled me to do likewise. What are we going to do here this time? You know very well that we're here to hunt power. I know that, but what are we going to do in particular? You know that I don't have the slightest idea. Do you mean that you never follow a plan? Hunting power is a very strange affair. There is no way to plan it ahead of time. That's what's exciting about it. A warrior proceeds as if he had a plan, though, because he trusts his personal power. He knows for a fact it will make him act in the most appropriate fashion. I pointed out that his statements were somehow contradictory. If a warrior already had personal power, why was he hunting for it? I am the warrior who already has it. You asked me if I had a plan, and I said that I trust my personal power to guide me. I don't need to have a plan. We remained quiet for a moment and then began walking again. The slopes were very steep, and climbing them was very difficult and extremely tiring for me. On the other hand, there seemed to be no end to Don Juan's stamina. He did not run or hurry. His walking was steady and tireless. I noticed that he was not even sweating, even after having climbed an enormous and almost vertical slope. When I reached the top of it, Don Juan was already there waiting for me. As I sat down next to him, I felt that my heart was about to burst out of my chest. I lay on my back and sweat literally poured from my brows. Don Juan laughed out loud and rolled me back and forth for a while. The motion helped me catch my breath. I told him that I was simply awed by his physical prowess. I've been trying to draw your attention to it all along. You're not old at all, Don Juan. How do you do it? I don't do anything. My body feels fine, that's all. I treat myself very well, therefore, I have no reason to feel tired or ill at ease. The secret is not in what you do to yourself, but rather what you don't do. I waited for an explanation. He seemed to be aware of my incapacity to understand. He smiled knowingly and stood up. This is a place of power. Find a place for us to camp here on this hilltop. I began to protest. I wanted him to explain what I should not do to my body. He made an imperative gesture. Cut the guff. This time, just act for a change. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to find a suitable place to rest. It might take you all night. It's not important that you find this spot either. The important issue is you try to find it. I put away my writing pad and stood up. Don Juan reminded me, as he had done countless times, Whenever he had asked me to find a resting place, I had to look without focusing on any particular spot, squinting my eyes until my view was blurred. I began to walk, scanning the ground with my half-closed eyes. Don Juan walked a few feet to my right and a couple of steps behind me. I covered the periphery of the hilltop first. My intention was to work my way in a spiral to the center, but once I had covered the circumference of the hilltop, Don Juan made me stop. He said that I was letting my preference for routines take over. In a sarcastic tone, he added that I was certainly covering the whole area systematically, but in such a stagnant way, I would not be able to perceive the suitable place. He added that he himself knew where it was, so there was no chance of improvisations on my part. Don Juan made me sit down. He then plucked a single leaf from a number of bushes and gave them to me. He ordered me to lie down on my back and loosen my belt and place the leaves against the skin of my umbilical region. He supervised my movements and instructed me to press the leaves against my body with both hands. He then ordered me to close my eyes and warned me that if I wanted perfect results, I should not lose hold of the leaves or open my eyes or even try to sit up when he shifted my body to a position of power. He grabbed me by the right armpit and swirled me around. He commanded me to concern myself only with the feeling of warmth that was going to come from the leaves. I lay motionless for a moment, and then I began to feel a strange heat emanating from the leaves. At first, I sensed it with the palm of my hands. Then the warmth extended to my abdomen. 
and finally it literally invaded my entire body. In a matter of minutes, my feet were burning up with a heat that reminded me of times when I had had a high temperature. Don Juan helped me stand up. He said I should not open my eyes until he told me to, and that I should keep pressing the leaves to my stomach until I found the suitable spot to rest. After a moment, he whispered in my ear that I should open my eyes and I should walk without a plan, letting the power of the leaves pull and guide me. I began to walk aimlessly. The heat of my body was uncomfortable. I believed I was running a high temperature, and I became absorbed in trying to conceive by what means Don Juan had produced it. Don Juan walked behind me. He suddenly let out a scream that nearly paralyzed me. He explained, laughing, that abrupt noises scare away unpleasant spirits. I squinted my eyes and walked back and forth for about half an hour. In that time, the uncomfortable heat of my body turned into a pleasurable warmth. I experienced a sensation of lightness as I paced up and down the hilltop. I felt disappointed, however. There were no changes whatsoever in my field of vision, no unusual colors or glare or dark masses. I finally became tired of squinting my eyes and opened them. I was standing in the front of a small ledge of sandstone, which was one of the few barren rocky places on the hilltop. The rest was dirt with widely spaced small bushes. For some unknown reason, I thought that the sandstone ledge was beautiful. I stood in front of it for a long time, and then I simply sat down on it. Good. Good, Don Juan said, patting me on the back. He then told me to carefully pull the leaves from under my clothes and place them on the rock. As soon as I had taken the leaves away from my skin, I began to cool off. I took my pulse. It seemed to be normal. Don Juan laughed and called me Dr. Carlos and asked me if I could also take his pulse. He said that what I had felt was the power of the leaves, and that power had cleared me and enabled me to fulfill my task. I asserted in all sincerity that I had done nothing in particular, and that I sat down on that place because I was tired and because I found the color of the sandstone very appealing. We didn't speak for a long time. I didn't know what to say. I was exhausted. I wanted to close my eyes, but I didn't dare. Don Juan must have noticed my state and said it was okay to fall asleep. He told me to place my hands on my abdomen over the leaves and try to feel that I was lying suspended on the bed of strings that he had made for me on my place of death. I closed my eyes and in memory of the peace and plenitude I would experienced while sleeping on the other hilltop invaded me. I wanted to find out if I could actually feel I was suspended, but I fell asleep. I woke up just before the sunset, refreshed and invigorated. It was windy, but I didn't feel cold. The leaves on my stomach seemed to have acted like a furnace, a heater of some sort. I found that Don Juan had brought my writing pads and placed them underneath my head. You found the right place. Power guided you here, without any plan on your part. What kind of leaves did you give me? They were just leaves. Do you mean that I could grab leaves from any bush and they would produce the same effect on me? No, I don't mean that you yourself can do that. You have no personal power. I mean that any kind of leaf can help you, providing that the person who gave it to you has power. What helped you today was not the leaves, but power. Your power, Don Juan? I suppose you could say it was my power, although that is not really accurate. Power does not belong to anyone. Stored power can only be used to help someone else store power. I asked him if that meant that his power was limited only to helping others. Don Juan patiently explained that he could use his personal power however he pleased, but when it came to giving it directly to another person, it was useless unless that person used it in search of personal power. Everything one does hinges on personal power. Therefore, for one who doesn't have any, the deeds of a warrior are incredible. It takes power to even conceive what power is. But I know you don't understand. Not because you don't want to, but because you have very little personal power. What should I do, Don Juan? Nothing. Just proceed as you are now. Power will find a way.